going on guys? Welcome to another episode. So today we're doing something you guys have been uh, asking for, mm -hmm. the much requested update on the tortoise greenhouse. Now Kyle, after having this greenhouse um, operational for a few months now, what are you kind of noticing while you're in here? So it's tough because right now is obviously the peak growing time for grass. So I don't want to take this as year round because obviously in the winter, the grass is grow gonna grow a lot slower. So it's hard because I, what I really want to do is just kind of cover this because it grows so quickly. So I just want to cover this with cypress mulch. But the problem with that is in the winter, you know, it, we could have so much cypress mulch that the, uh, the grass isn't going to grow as well. And then the tortoises can easily keep up with the grass. So we want to have it to where it's always a source of food for the tortoises. So obviously we kind of have to just keep, you know, working the grass. And as you can see, it grows super quick. I mean, Honestly, if you so cut this, basically, a week later, it's, a, it's gonna be this long. It's a seasonal battle here. It is. It, it is. That's so, gonna be in. But that's the a thing. Lot so of work. we have to see. So what it's gonna be like in the winter. So obviously, we just have to let it do its thing. Uh, still supplement them with you know fruits and veggies that we offer twice a week. Um, but we kind of have to ride it out and just see how it's gonna be in the winter because obviously we put them in in the heat of the summer. The grass is super long. Well, what do we got here? So these are the same tortoises. You haven't moved yep. any, but what we're feeding them is some lettuce and strawberries. So yep. how about we show the people what we're working with with yep. the So that's babies. the thing is it's a jungle. So it's hard because, um, you know, like I said, if, if we clean it all up, you know, in the winter, we could be suffering uh, with just too little of grass. So okay, guys, check just this out right here. Up. This is the hypo redfoot, correct? Yep. Hypo chariot? Yeah, they're all, there's all, these are all hypos in here. So what I'll do is just spread this all around because it is a jungle. Um, but it is good because obviously tortoise, the redfoot tortoises are tropical species. It's like fine waldo, but with tortoises. Yeah. So we're, the good thing is when we throw strawberries in there, they pick up on this so quick. They'll see a little red thing flying, they're like, food, and they run. So <laughs> let's just see if we can get any out. I mean, they are burying themselves, but that one's about to go after the strawberries again. He's making, yeah, his, love the making his move. Um, but I was thinking of at least making like a, an open area here for them just so it's a little bit of a uh, relief from the jungle uh and how many do you have in here i don't even remember how many put a in here. dozen of them there's about a dozen hypo red foots in here uh but again them being a tropical tortoise this is honestly ideal i mean they have a lot of shade you know they get a little bit of sun bands every once in a while uh they have the clear water source that runs every day for them so I mean, obviously it's working. This grass is growing. And yeah. check out this little hypo right down here. He's chowing down on that strawberry. He's going to town. So just spreading it all around. Oh, sorry, bud. So just make sure that in the back, they get plenty. So again, you know, that they want to forage around, they'll find it, but otherwise they got plenty of grass to eat. So I definitely don't think they're starving anytime soon. And then over here, we got the radiator. Yep. So come take a look. These guys might be easier to see because they've kind of eaten their grass down a farther they because have. they're bigger. So, so how about, the thing. take a look at this little guy. Obviously all these guys are gonna get bigger. And uh, and there, there he goes. He's, there. he's like, that's a strawberry. And the winter is gonna be drier, but obviously with the sprinklers, it'll help with the grass growing. But I want to just make sure we don't put too much cypress mulch around and then they, you know, we have to feed them a lot more just because we've killed all the grass. Yeah. And how long have you had these radiated? Had them four years, I want to say. I think four years. But everyone loves the strawberries. Yeah, they're obsessed. But it is funny how everyone starts to know the routine. And that's what's nice is obviously the bigger enclosures the bigger tortoises definitely have their spots where they can wallow out more and eat areas. So we'll definitely see with the red foots over there where they can definitely, they've worked from the outer edges to the center. So again, it's just kind of an R and D phase right now is figuring out, you know, when we should cut the grass. Um, but also what we'll definitely do next summer is we'll get the robotic mowers, which are essentially Roombas for in here. That'll just cut the grass. They can bump it in the tortoises just like a Roomba, but they won't hurt the tortoises. They have little blades underneath huh. that if they if they hit something or they get flipped over, they'll actually just automatically shut off. So they're super safe for the tortoises, but they'll at least keep it manicured. Obviously, this is just getting too overgrown. All right, guys, so we are about to feed the redfoot tortoises, but we noticed one of the Burmese blacks flipped over. So this is a prime example as to why I have them in the greenhouse. Now, obviously, if he was outside and if it was a sunny day, I know, but you know, this does happen a lot. So if it was a sunny day, uh, these guys are definitely 
cooler temperature tortoises, he would most li likely perish. So that's the key to having them in the greenhouse. The majority of it is shaded. Now, obviously, guys, in my biosecurity with feeding, I don't want to go in here and walk around. So that's why I just have stuff to flip him over and let him do his thing. So now that he's all set, we will go back to the Redfoots and feed them. So as you can see here is like I was saying over there, they worked from the out, outward areas in and they've definitely eaten a lot of it. So you can see this is the heat of the summer. This is when the grass is growing in the most um, and they're already pretty much keeping up with it pretty well. So obviously in the winter, yeah. they're gonna really keep up with it. So- Cause you basically got the middle, which is dense and then all around it, they've been chowing down. So they got their hangout spots. And these guys, just like the little babies, are gonna go crazy with these strawberries. As soon as they start seeing on, them guys. dropping, they are stoked. Oh, I didn't see that one over there. Come here, little buddy. Oh, he's like, ah. Come on. That's so hot on the back. He's just ripping around. He doesn't know where to go. Yeah, and they love these strawberries. Yeah. So how many heads of lettuce do you throw in with, like an enclosure like this, with 1.4 and then uh, so six tortoises, yeah. six adults, how many heads you throw? I mean, I'm gonna be honest, you know, I, my good friend, Jack Hyman, he takes care of the majority of the feeding bi-weekly with the tortoises. Um, so we kind of just did the feeding here for the special. I usually oversee it, you know, make sure they're getting the proper amount, um, but he's been doing an awesome job. So he usually gives about, um, usually a head of lettuce per for the smaller guys. And then about three to four boxes of strawberries for each. Now obviously with Crush, he eats a ton. So we usually give him like eight heads of lettuce just for him. All right guys, so next up is Bug, the Salcata tortoise from Utah. Now he has an injury that happened years ago to his back. And supposedly the owner's kid hit it with something, some hard object. Uh, I believe it was a baseball, but you know, that's just, that's just rumor. So unfortunately the owners didn't know about it until it was too late. And there was already maggots that got into the wound because it actually cracked the top of the shell and maggots were able to get under the shell and eat a lot of the tissue. So what uh, my good friend, Chris and her team, her vet team was able to do is peel that top layer off, really clean it out. Um, and then at least get it to what it is today. And now he's outside in Florida. And that shell is obviously with tortoises. You know, they, grew, they live so long, um, but they also heal. It takes a long time for them to heal. Uh, so it's just a very, very long process, but he is healing really well. Yeah, the shell actually from when he came here is doing so much better. I mean, it's mm -hmm. actually looking like we got new growth coming over. So, some of it, it's like I said, or like Kyle said, it takes so long for these uh, reptiles to heal that if you kind of look at it every single day, you're not gonna notice. But for me, I've only seen him maybe five or six times every once in a while. So I can actually see that it's starting to look better and I can see some new growth around the side of the dark. It's almost um, like Cause it was really it's white. Really, cause that, that middle part is, is rather soft. So you can see it's slowly working, working its way in. Yeah. Uh, hardening essentially. But we are at the Burmese black tortoise enclosure now. I know you wanted an update. How's that for an update? So that was a, what was, what was that? The, that was a big plant. That was a cat palm. That's that was cat. exactly right there. So yes. right, that's the plant is what it looked like. Now this is what they reduced. It we to. even put the bamboo around it to deter them. And they were just like, nope, we're just going to mow it down and get to it. So they did it to that one, that one, that one. So I think, uh, I realized we're fighting a losing battle. So just gonna take them out. We'll just rip them out. So maybe we'll try something else. You know, the beauty of the Robolinis is they have a really hard, uh, hard trunk, so they won't be able to do that. So maybe we'll put another Robolini right here. Uh, and then maybe a Robolini that hangs around, hangs over the pond, just like those two. But uh, yeah, so we're definitely gonna head to admit defeat on that one. Yeah. And it's hilarious watching these guys run from completely across the enclosure, just like, super stoked about food. They're like, oh, feed me. And that one's gonna nose the strawberry right there. He's like, oh, I like this. <laughs> and one part uh, that's interesting about these tortoises in particular is they're actually uh, omnivorous. So they'll eat the plants, vegetables, all that, but they'll also eat meat. So if like, say a rat got in here and died or a raccoon or like any kind of uh, living mammal died in their enclosure, they would actually take care of it. We'd never even know if they'd eat it. A lot of times too is what I'll do is with them and the Redfoots, I'll actually mix in uh, croc chow. 
every once in a while, usually like once a month, just so they can get that protein. Um, just as you said, it is definitely something that they uh, they eat in the wild. Yeah. So I think it's something that's beneficial and supposedly Super helps for breeding, even though you know, that's definitely not top of my list. And that's one thing that I don't know if we've mentioned before that I'm kind of looking forward to in these enclosures is because before the tortoises would get rained on, we wouldn't go collect the eggs. Well, now they're in a, a, a pen or an enclosure where they're not gonna get rain because of the roof, or at least a lot to like drown the eggs. Mm -hmm. And then since we're not gonna collect the eggs, we may in a few months or maybe next year just see some babies start popping up and walking around. And that'd be kind of cool to be able to walk in here and just see little baby tortoises in the enclosure. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not like they're critically endangered. It's not like there's a, a really a need to produce these animals. So it'd be kind of cool to do an experiment to watch them lay and let's build like a cage around it so they mm. can't they can't climb on it or hurt the babies when they do hatch. So then when we, we can come back and check, we come back and check these guys all the time, you know, we can check that nest and if they hatch, you know, it'd be awesome. Yeah, just for just for the fun of it. And these guys also build nests. So they actually build a mound nest. Kind of like so, crocodile? Yeah, so it's very easy for them to, uh, very easy for us to find the nest. Well, that's super unique. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, kind of update about some tortoises uh, in the greenhouse, kind of seeing how it's uh, progressing now that we've got some time behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you liked today's video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also check us out on Instagram at Primitive Predators, and we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.